Uh, what an honor to, to have Professor Stark here today. I mean, it's... <laughs> Yay. Okay, again, my name's Ray Lutz, Citizens Oversight. We approach this a little bit different. Now, Citizens Oversight started as a nonprofit organization based in San Diego, but the focus is civic engagement in general. And so we were trying to get people involved in providing oversight to our uh, democracy. Uh, the quote is, the most important office in a democracy is that of the citizen. That's you. So you're in charge of overseeing your democracy. It's yours. So if it's screwed up, guess whose fault it is? Our fault. <laughs> so what happened was um, I did a review. This was after we fought Blackwater down in San Diego. And we got Blackwater to pull their project. And uh, in the process, we had a recall election, which we video recorded the hand counting of every ballot. And that's when I said, hey, you know, well, that's pretty cool. We could take a picture of every, every ballot and confirm Maybe as they're hand counting, it was nice to be able to go back through and confirm that they were hand counting it correctly. Well, after that, I said, well, I'm just going to go in and see how they do their elections. So I went into San Diego and said, um, can I take a look at your procedures documents? I'll just read those over, and then I'll understand how they do the election. Well, they said, we don't have any procedures documents. You'll have to just ask us questions. So for two years, I asked questions and got answers. Please clarify this, you know, and before you get the answer. So, of course, one of the key findings is they need to document what they're doing. Before you can have a high-quality system, you need to document what it is. I was realizing it was getting into a severe problem. So what we found in this process was that the audit looked like a really important thing to take a look at, and that's why we, we designed the snapshot protocol, which I'll describe in a second, which describes how you as citizens can provide oversight for that. So again, you'll hear a lot about risk limiting audit and different kinds of audits. One of the things that they always seem to miss, how do the citizens observe this? Because unlike, well, this is a special case perhaps where all the rest of government can run without oversight. No, that's not true either. But this is a specific place. The elected officials can't be trusted to take care of the election system that just elected them. We have to do it. There's no way around this. Okay, so we deployed the snapshot protocol across all the uh, counties in California and also in, uh, in Florida. We tried doing it there. They have a, a not as good of a, an audit process. They only choose one random race and audit 1% by the machines. So it's really pretty crappy, but there's a chance that you could catch something and the way they randomly select that, we've actually found some interesting things, but I won't go into that. So this last year, we did catch, um, in this implementation of the snapshot protocol, we realized that Michael Vu was not counting the latter half of the, yes, you, know, you probably got, you, this group understands that pretty well. 285,000 ballots were not included in the tally. We asked them to choose another eight batches, which would have, encompass that. Not that much to ask. Uh, he said no, respectfully. He said respectfully no. <laughs> so we went to trial. We won at least most of it. In the trial they said that yes, all the vote by mail ballots should be included in the run percent manual tally. And they, they came up with a, the county came up with an argument that we were asking for the unaccepted provisionals to be included and the judge said okay we're not this was a bad argument so the only reason we didn't get all of the provisionals too was because I believe the judge just wanted to split the decision so we would both have to appeal it which we both did and our appeal has to happen for it to apply to all the counties in the state so if it gets through the appeal then it will be implemented to all the counties the paperwork Yes, thank you. The paperwork was delivered for the transcript on August 15th. On August 24th, we noticed they had amended AB 840. 
I asked my attorney, I says, does that look suspicious? He says, absolutely. <laughs> so essentially this flow diagram here is kind of complex, but it, it's not too unusual. We have ballots coming in, they go through incoming inspection, they go through scanning, through the central tabulator, and then we get the election night report. That's called the semi-final official canvas, as we now know. We get that as a snapshot file. That's why we call it the snapshot. Now, when I first started this, I said, well, I want to compare what you're doing with the 1% manual tally. And they said, well, here's the result. Remember, that was missing 285,000 ballots. So the result, there's no way we could even make sense of it. We couldn't compare anything. The point is you have to get the data file at the right time. You really want to get that data file before they do the random selection. Because if they, if they don't give it to you up front, they can randomly choose and then unfix any ones that they happen to chose that they manipulated, if you have a compromised election department, which is our assumption. Our assumption is we trust no one and everyone is corrupt. And so therefore, we have to be able to take a look at it and find out. Trust no one. Eyes open, no fear. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so in, in the end, we try to see if the report matches. So here's the first step. I included this just because we had the picture of Michael Vu, right? And he's one of our treasured personalities. So uh, here's where I was getting the snapshot data file from Michael Vu. He was cooperative to providing that. And uh, then we did, we observed the 1% uh, drawing, also brought a camera in to look at the manual tally. But there's not much you can see when they're actually tallying things. It's actually when you're doing the comparison. So essentially, here's how the process works. We send a letter to the registrar prior to the election saying that we're going to do this. And we ask for that snapshot CD so we have the information. And we've enhanced this because we used to just assume that they were only going to do that semifinal canvas because that's how Michael Vu was doing it. We, you know, since we've revised it. We pick up the CD prior to their selection, then participate in the random selection. Very important to film that. Now, some places won't let you. They say, you, you know, cameras are not allowed. Of course they are. This is a public meeting. So we're going to have to have people really stick up for themselves and maybe get arrested at that point to make the point that we have to bring cameras in. You gotta, be, you gotta be serious. And by the way, there's a metaphor that I use sometimes, such as, you know, we're gonna fight for things, I brought up my fist or whatever, that doesn't mean I'm gonna fight physically. When I say heads are gonna roll, that doesn't mean I'm cutting off the heads. It means that they get fired or something else. So those are metaphors and we're, we're, non, we're non-violent, okay? But we are looking for blood, okay? <laughs> So we, we obtain, um, we watch the manual tally, we get the report after the manual tally is over and then compare with the snapshot data. Sounds simple. They don't give you the data that you need in that manual tally report, actually, a lot of the times. This is what happens. And I'll, uh, I, this is one thing that I've described. Some of the, uh, this process, the manual tally process is so bad, even though on paper it looks pretty good, but how they implement it is so bad because as Professor Stark said, there's no process for them to actually verify what's going on. It just looks good. It looks really good. But when you actually look closely at it, it's not. So we have to get, um, so this is sort of the overview of the process. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, because I th even though I could go on and on. So we have extended this to um, audit the total number of ballots printed, see how many are delivered to the precinct, how many are spoiled, how many are voted, in the 85 precinct review in San Diego. We looked at how many precincts could not match up, how many blank ballots were brought in, how many were voted, spoiled, and then ended up blank. You'd think that would be a fairly easy thing to add up. And only 15% of the time did they add it up and have it work out. This is why I'm not too comfortable with assuming that precincts can hand count the whole election. They can't even add up the number of ballots. Really, really worrisome for the strategy of 
hand count all the ballots in the precinct. Now maybe it could be done if they do a lot of things, but I think we have to assume the computers are going to be used and we just have to learn how to watch them very carefully. So also we check the polling places for propriety, are the voter guides, audits, security seals, are they numbered, um, are they tracked? Do they do anything if they find out that they're wrong? In San Diego, there are 99 cases of wrong, broken, or bad seals. Oh, what they do? Nothing. Just report that they had those. So they don't follow up on anything. And unless the citizens are there looking at the report, who's going to check? No one. We follow the ballot delivery trucks with a video camera. We work with the register to wait on the random selection um, for the VBM later, the vote by mail, which ha happens later. You have to be there, ready to do it. In California, we looked at these top target counties. The top 24 counties, which you see are all the colored ones here, is 92% of the voters. So, uh, you know, we don't mean to disregard those last 8%, but that's 34 counties that, that um, you know, that's a lot of work to look at, and you only get 8%. So, um, I'm, unfortunately, those are the ones like Inyo County with Cami Foot who um, blew the whistle on AB 840, who's in the smaller counties. Those are the honest counties. Um, now, what happened in the 2016 primary? First of all, you see in this diagram here the time going along the bottom. The first set of ballots are the early vote by mail ballots. Those are processed before 8 p.m. on election night. Now, they may have been there may be more ballots that were received prior to that time that were not processed yet. It takes a while to process them. And then everything else after that are the later vote by mail, which you see is the third one across the top. And then the polling place ballots, you see there in the middle and then provisional. So those are the groups. In the primary, of course, as you know, they only tallied up to where that yellow arrow is at the bottom. That yellow arrow is the semi-final official canvas. And then everything after that is the stuff they disregarded. What we found was that the early vote by mail ballots was the only set when Hillary Clinton won by an appreciable margin. Uh, according to originally, it was 64% at, br broadly. and the audited precincts, it was only 59. In all the rest of the sets, it was either about even or Bernie Sanders won. This is pretty rare. Usually, the assumption in everyone's mind, all oh, those first few vote by mail ballots, they're early, maybe they're a little bit more conservative, five, three to five percent, but they probably wouldn't tip by flipping this whole thing, which turns out to be like a 32 percent flip, because you're affecting each one 16 percent. So we're, in addition to that, these early vote by mail ballots, the way Michael Vood did it, he started doing it by batch. He selected of the 723 batches that were then collected, he picked eight. Eight randomly out of the 723. But then, as soon as we filed our lawsuit, he switched gears and said, I'm gonna, instead of processing those by batch, which are mixed precincts, about 400 ballots in each batch, mixed up in precincts, I'm gonna then, now, go back into all of the batches and pull out just the ballots for the precincts that were selected for the polling place ballots. So we hired 40 people for a week to pre-stack all those ballots and get them set up. Then the report that they used, the number of ballots, didn't match the original snapshot file that we had. So we had a, <laughs> exactly what we were looking for. We were looking for a difference between that original snapshot file and this final result, and we got it. We tried to get them to redo it in the trial, but they wouldn't. So what we're doing now is, uh, okay, the summary. Why do we su suspect tampering in that first set? Because it's vastly different results. You look at other results and there may maybe three to five percent difference between the early vote by mail and the later. I can understand that, but not this much. Vu authorized the use of whiteout tape throughout the whole election. And he said, well, it's taped so you can pull it up and you can check. But no one does. There's no reports, no uh, lo logging, and no procedure. And no one watching as one person does it. 
So it's like the worst of everything you can possibly imagine. Yeah, we're modifying the ballots with whiteout. Only one person does it in that back room, and no one's watching as he does it. You know, it's like, come on now. Then he hired 40 people a week to resort and pre-stack the ballots, and the totals did not match the snapshot file. All the red flags are up. Okay. So that, what we're doing in status is I'm just going to go back and cover everything now. The election audit lawsuit, thank you to Dr. Professor Stark for testifying at the trial. Um, give him a hand. Uh, because he did that pro bono and we appreciate it. This appeal is in process. They've submitted their more, their recent, you know, statement as to why they think that, uh, you know, their position is correct. And our statement is, uh, brief is due on December 3rd. You can come to our website and read that if you like. Then AB 840, as you've learned today, is a disgusting move by KCO to gut the election audit results by removing about 40% of the ballots from audit scrutiny. That looks like we may be stopping it, thanks to this, <laughs> this meeting. <laughs> okay, and then in the recount, we've got this project called Recount the 2016 Primary. Because of that, those, about that section I showed you that looked suspicious. Well, we asked for those ballots. I said, Vu, I want access to the ballots. He says, well, I have to keep them for 22 months by law, but also the law says they're sealed, so you can't get to them. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He said, you cannot get to them. So, uh, so then we said, okay, fine, we're gonna file another lawsuit, which is the ballot access lawsuit, saying that the, public acts, the California Public Records Act says that we have access to the public records. These are obviously public records. There's no voter identifiable information on them and therefore we, we would like to get to them. And the goal intent there is that when we get those, we're gonna set up a high-speed scanner and scan them and find out what's going on. So that's, that's the, the recount situation. Um, now, there's some new work that we're working on. Uh, proposed amendments to the California Election Code 15360. I ran out of documents out there. There were some on the table, but I can print more. Uh, they're on, the, on our site. But basically, we went, based on the information that we had about how these people are doing this, we said, here's how we could change this in the right way. Okay, let's make it stronger, not weaker, okay? And add, adding escalation, I'll show you that in a second. It's not that complex. And then um, the ballot, we're working on a ballot image security standard. And the things that Professor Stark brought up are correct. We have to set up, get a system set up so that we know that these ballot images are not being fiddled with, not swapped out, added, subtracted, or modified. And we also do have to have a system where we compare them with the, the paper. And then we also have a project that we started in, which is called easy voting, which is the opposite of voter suppression committee that Trump set up, and to promote same day registration in the state. So we've done a survey of all the states to find out what their voter registration situation is. And, and it's kind of interesting. You, you, some of the more conservative states do have same day registration. And we're getting it in, in you know, this coming year, they're gonna be actually applying that law that's been sitting on the books for a while. So uh, in that uh, 15.360 paper, uh, we added this proposed escalation methodology. So uh, you can read that, but I just wanted to kind of explain it. And a variance by when you do this is anything, like if, if a bubble is, is not colored in and you thought it should have been, that's one. And if the other one is colored in and shouldn't have been, that was another. So there's two if you flip the vote. So you gotta count on the right way. And um, so if the maximum number of variances ever found in the ones that you audited, let's say you found one with 10, then you have to assume that maybe all the rest of the ballots had 10 wrong. And the, all the ones that are not unaudited, and then you have to see if I had 10 wrong in all the rest of the ballots, would that be enough to, to flip to, you know, would, would the margin of, in one of the races still be enough to overdo that? 
So if, you, if your margin is huge, you wouldn't need to do any escalation, obviously, because it's so huge. But if it's close, then you would say, wow, I'm, I've got some problems here, and maybe we need to escalate. This is, this is kind of the easy, not nearly as good as what Professor Stark is talking about, but what I wanted to do was just get some, a first step in, because I know that they're, they're just doing such a terrible job of implementing the audit anyway. And that's, that's the end. Now, I wanted to say one more thing. I didn't really say this, but we have this other thing called the Open Ballot Initiative, and it implements a process that I came up with in 2008 based on that review of the Blackwater ballots, the images. It goes one step beyond just saying we want to get images. It's what I'm talking about is to set up a process where other groups would audit and review those images and then compare the results with each other so that then we have redundant processing of the ballots in a structured way, not just random like they do now. Oh, you can come in and look and observe the election. If you can, you know, you might be able to see something through those windows. No, that's not good enough. We need a structured way where other groups can watch what's going on and get to the actual data. That's what they're leaving out. They're not giving us that access. Okay, so I, I guess I'm going to stop because I've talked long enough and go to the next speaker. Thank you.